Hello, a very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishna Veni and we've been talking about the story of life on earth and that's biology. So welcome to my lecture, the last in series for the syllabus wrap up series. So today we're going to talk about the last chapter in class 12. So literally not the last chapter, but the last chapter of our content. So today it's biotechnology and its applications. So with this, we say a big goodbye to all the new chapters in biology. So I have taught you 11th, 12th, both botany as well as zoology. So I hope we are done with the second round of revision, so I hope you guys are also equally thorough with it. Hi, Anthony Abhi, a very, very happy good evening. Yes, I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you so much for joining my session. Hi, hey, Siddhant. Hi. A very, very happy good evening. So, what a surprise. How come you came to my session? Huh? You don't have a chemistry class? Hi, Fiza. Yes, hello. So, thank you for joining my session. For all those who are new, so please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So, today it's going to be a very short lecture so because biotechnology and its application is a so short chapter in itself. So, we're just going to discuss 15 questions and whatever the content related with it. So, I'm going to explain. So, this is a way that we are going to revise. Yes, ready for the game? Yes. So I hope all of your preparations are going on smoothly. There are no more problems. So I hope all of you are mentally stable, mentally healthy to go forward with your preparations. Yes. Hi, Mauni. Yes. Hello. Welcome to my session. So thank you so much for joining. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay. So now let's move forward. So before we move forward, so I have a very interesting announcement to make for you. So we'll finish off by technology today. So we are already done with the syllabus of class 11. So today we'll be done with the syllabus of class 12 as well. Yes, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Okay. So on Thursday, so today is Tuesday. So tomorrow is Wednesday. So I give you one day time to go through the entire chapters of biology. Hi, Siddhant. Yes, good. Good evening. Very, very good evening. Uh, Ma'am, in form, in full form to write exam. Okay, really great. I appreciate your con uh, confidence. Yes, yes, you are here. So thank you so much. So you don't have a chemistry class? You came to my class? You saw the thumbnail already? <laughs> okay, great. So uh, that is tomorrow. That is tomorrow's done. Yes, I will do an announcement. No issues. Okay. So Thursday, we are having a full menti quiz, but I have divided into botany and zoology. So botany will be the first menti quiz and zoology will be the next menti quiz. So I will bring 45, 45 questions each. Okay. So please uh, read. I am giving you one day time and then we will have the menti. Okay. Yes. So the most uh, interesting session that I would uh, t uh, say because this is something not very new but new for all of us because just now you are hearing this term. So Siddhant, I actually told you to join for this session that is tomorrow at 5 p.m. So it is take a 15 minute coffee break from your tedious preparation. So I would like to tell you something very very interesting. So uh, sometimes things like these also makes life interesting. So what is an antibody cocktail? So all of you know what is a cocktail right? A mix of all drinks is a cocktail. Right. So now what is an antibody cocktail? So all of us know Donald Trump was uh, tested positive for your COVID-19. But if you have noticed the situation very, very uh, uh, in detail, so he was back to legs within four days. So how is that he tested negative within four days or a week? So when you test positive, you quarantine for 14 days, then you take the test and then you quarantine for four days so that it is uh, fine. Right. So that is how we did. Yes, but Donald Trump was fine within four days or within six days. So how is that possible? So now here tomorrow, bring your coffee cups or your chai cups and join with me for this 15 minute session on what is antibody cocktail. Okay, so it's got to be a very interesting some session, something that's very new. So it can be useful for all the life science students as well as those who are willing to do bee farm and of course doctors as well. So you should know how different th therapies, how different types of three treatments are existing here. Right, so that is your uh, antibody uh, cocktail. So please join me tomorrow at 5 p.m. Yes. Please give link to organism and population lecture too. Okay, so please ping me in telegram. I will do. Okay. It's okay, ma'am. I can attend today and tomorrow both the days. Okay, but I don't know if you will understand biotechnology because that is a class 12 chapter. A bit complicated. See if you understand. If you don't, yes, that's completely fine because I understand because we are just in morphology in your class. So it's completely fine. Okay, so that, yes. But anyways, thank you abundance for joining, remembering and joining. So that was so sweet of you. Yes, so please share this link with your friends because anyone can attend because it's not a new term, but it's new for you all, right? So you have heard your hearing it now maybe some people have heard it before but this was actually 
it, this actually came into picture on October 31st, so almost a year back. But how back, back we are, so we are lagging behind time. So where we are knowing about complex terms. So yes, we have antibody cocktail in India as well. So on 5th of May 2021, so your Central Duck Standards and Control Organization, they approved antibody cocktail in India as well. Okay, so we are running behind in time. So this is not a new term in the market. So this is an old term, but new for us because we are going to learn about it now. Okay, so I was thinking in between that I should do this, but I didn't get proper time because I was occupied with other classes. So I thought now I will do this tomorrow. So every alternate day you have a mentee and in between for 15 minutes you have something like this. So even if we have a motivational session in 15 minutes, we will finish so that it is easy and I will give you motivation every alternate day so that we can cover motivation as well as your mentee. Okay, so on Thursday we are having botany 45 questions complete mentee. So botany includes your class 11 as well as your class 12. If you have doubt what are the chapters that fall under botany, open your need, click on the syllabus and check. Okay. Yes. Hi Naveen. Hello. Hi Darni. Hello. So thank you so much both of you for joining my lecture. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay. Okay, if this has been asked in need, so uh, God knows what, if they might, okay. But this is something that you should know what is happening around you because we are all related to the same field, right? So you aspiring to be doctors, so people who are here who are willing to do bee pharmacy. So you guys should know what is this in the market, right? It's good to know a lot of things, right? When some, someone talks about something, you will not be like an odd one out. Yes, you also know the content. You can also talk back. You can also argue. You can also have a conversation. So that is something like this, okay? But this was initially started in US okay I'm not talking more about it now because then tomorrow we'll not have content okay well I have a lot of content no issues yes Keshav hello so welcome to my lecture so thank you so much for joining my lecture so please do like share and subscribe so please join me tomorrow for a 15 minute coffee break so please bring your coffee cups and share okay yes Rosh Roshna and Roshni a very very happy good evening so thank you for joining my lecture so please do like share and subscribe okay so without any further delay we go to biotechnology and it's applications so biotechnology and its applications has all these contents so we first spoke about biotechnology principles and process so when you talk about your principles and process so anything that you do you want to know the application right so when we read ecology in your 12th we ask what is this why am I going to read ecology if I'm going to become a doctor so you want for the practical application of everything, right? So our mind is trained to, so why should we read trigonometry? Why should we read algebra? Why should we read quadratic equation, right? Fine. So in that case, so what is the practical use of biotechnology? So here we are going to talk about it. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, no issues. Yes, I'm doing really great. How are you, Keshav? How is your preparation going on? Okay, fine. So first we have to identify the critical areas of research, where our country is working forward. So where are the uh, scientists working forward to? So in which field, whether it's medicine, it's agriculture. So there do we have a problem? How can we bring about a solution? So everything has to be systematic, otherwise the world will not like it, right? So biotechnological applications in agriculture, biotechnological applications in medicine, transgenic animals and ethical issues. So these are the things where we have found a use, a practical application of your biotechnology and your recombinant DNA process. So now let's start solving questions. So we will get to know a flavor, a essence of what is the application of biotechnology. Yes, question number one. Conception of which of the following foods can prevent the kind of blindness associated with vitamin A deficiency? Flavor saver tomato, canola, golden rice, BT brinjal. Yes, can you be quick? Can you give me the answer? Yes. Okay, so Anthony Abhi says golden rice, so others agree with him. Yes. So golden rice, because golden rice has enriched uh, retinol content, you can say beta carotene content. So people always has a confusion. Ma'am, golden rice, you say it is a transgenic variety, meaning you have introduced a new gene in the entire genome. So you have your own DNA. If I insert a piece of gene in your DNA, so that is transgenic. So I'm inserting something foreign, so that is transgenic. So when I've inserted an extra gene, 
that is my golden rice that is my transgenic variety okay yes so oryza sativa fine so contains good quantities of beta carotene which is a pro vitamin a ma'am how many types of vitamin a are there of course your retinol is one type of vitamin a your beta carotene or your carotenoids are the next type of vitamin a so you have two types of vitamins a and your beta carotene is a pro vitamin a step before becoming the vitamin right so this has more amount of beta carotene so when a person consumes golden rice so meaning it enhances the production of vitamin a in that person's body so that is the very reason golden rice was produced but it was produced by process of biotechnology so that's perfectly good so you are equally good at it so the doctor of a cell is a biotechnologist yes definitely antony hi swami yes good evening thank you for joining hi durga hello okay fine so good so we are done with question 1 i have only 15 questions because it isn't a tough chapter and the weightage of this chapter isn't much okay so i want to finish as quickly as possible so that you guys can have self study time yes the genetically modified brinjal in india has been developed for insect resistance enhancing shelf life enhancing mineral content or drought resistance yes so we have genetically modified brinjal right Okay, you read this article somewhere online. Very good. See, your reading helps. So always be good in reading. That's very, very important. The more you read, the more smart you become. Very good, Siddhant. Hi, Swami. Yes. So, hello, uh, Dadni. Good evening. Yes, I'm doing good. How are you? Thank you so much for joining. So, please do like, share, and subscribe. Okay. So, genetically modified brinjal has been developed as an insect resistant variety. So, normal brinjal plant is vulnerable to a lot of insects. So, it was developed for insect resistant. But what is one problem with the genetic genetically modified crops? They cause allergies. Right? They cross cross reaction. So, that is then issue. So transgenic plants genetic modification so where all we do genetic modification modification just like that you cannot do a genetic modification so i cannot modify sadan genetically right so that is not possible i cannot take einstein's gene or shahrukh khan's gene and put it inside sadan that is not possible right yes so now genetic modification has been done for whom for which kind of plants did i select my audience suppose if i am teaching biology i have to choose an audience to which group of people i am going to teach yes biology is common right so there are biology at various levels but to which audience am i teaching that is important so to what is the mod a purpose of doing genetic modification so make plants crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses the plant should be made a uh, tolerant to your cold drought salt and heat condition it should be able to withstand all the environmental conditions reduce reliance on chemical pesticides so when you see you don't have to depend on medicines when you're completely fine so much in the same way when i alter the plant the plants don't have to depend on chemical pesticides help to reduce post harvest losses suppose if i say pe a spray pesticides on the plants sometimes if i harvest them after harvest i have to remove the ones which are having the pesticide right so that again is a lot of investment in my time and my labor right so that is not there so increase efficiency of mineral use stage by plants it prevents the exhaustion of fertility of the soil the plant itself is healthy right so in a way it does not need additional nutrients so the fertility of the soil is retained okay enhanced nutritional value of food like vitamin a enriched golden rice so these are the targets for transgenic plants okay so now question number 3 BT toxin kill the larvae of certain insects by binding of activated toxin on the midgut epithelial cells creating pores leading to swelling and lysis by st stopping transcription of the larval cells by altering central dogma taking place in the cells of the gut of the larva by stopping protein synthesis what is the answer so dan any guess so very soon so that will be like oh it's it's too complicated it's getting out of my head i'm leaving So Siddhant you had your cup of chai? Yes, it's raining in Kota so the weather is really beautiful. I don't know all of a sudden it started raining in Kota. Yeah, so the right answer is by binding of activated toxin on the bit guard epithelial cells. Yes, absolutely right. So we are talking about BT toxin. So what does BT stand for? Bacillus thuringiensis. Yes, Keshav you are right. Okay. Wow, Sudan, you're right. So that is the right answer. So here we have a quick recap of this concept. 
so your cotton plant right so india is also a country that has its roots in your textile industry every state of the country is rich in its particular silk you have banarasi silk you have kolkata cotton you have cotton blend you have so many varieties right so cotton plant is a very very huge base so if you have insects feeding on the cotton plant then it reduces uh, the plant or the significant loss of the plant is very very visible so we have to find a cure so a lot of worms beetles feed on the cotton leaf so that is the loss that we are having so if most of the leaves are lost who will do photosynthesis the plant becomes malnourished right so we have to put a full stop to this so what is the solution so we had a beautiful rescue that is a bacteria so the name of the bacteria is bacillus thuringiensis So this bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis produces a particular kind of toxin okay so it uh, not a toxin so it is an insecticidal protein so whenever i say the term sidel it is killing so it kills the insects okay this insecticidal protein right is in the protoxin form so suppose if a worm is there on the leaf say a ball worm is there when the ball worm is eating the leaf and of course bacteria is not visible to our eyes and bacteria enters this worm so in the gut of this worm you have alkaline ph in the mid gut of this worm you have an alkaline ph so this alkaline ph activates this toxin so from the protoxin stage it gets activated to the toxic stage so once it gets activated to the toxic stage it creates pores on the membranes so you have a cell so it causes holes on the cell membrane when it causes pores then the contents of the cell comes out right when the contents of the cell come out the cells die so thus it kills the worm so we can save our cotton plant right yes fine so this is the mechanism of your bt cotton that is bacillus thuringiensis so what clothes for this insecticidal protein is your cry gene so remember the uh, variants of the cry gene that is very important okay yes fine so now we go to the next question so cry genes have been introduced in cotton and corn rice potato soya bean all of the above for oh, here to news readers said because of south monsoon there may be rain but no rain more sunny temperature than normal here it's a pleasant weather not hot not cold okay okay fine so here it was damn hot in the morning that i literally got completely wet with my clothes because i didn't know what is happening it was so hot but then it started raining because too much of heat also causes rain right yeah so question number 4 so everyone says a so cry genes have been done only in uh, your cotton and corn yes very short it is a i think okay so it is all of the about to some extent all of them have cry genes but this is a high order higher order critical thinking question but yes we have read it in cotton that is bt cotton but it can also be seen in everything else which is harmed by a lot of worms okay yeah so question 5 bt toxin is harmful to insects like lepidopterans so how do you pronounce this lepidopterans coleopterans diploterans sorry this is dipterans and all of the above so lepidopterans is tobacco budworm and amiworm so cleopterans is beetles then you have diploterans it is flies and mosquitoes all of the above yes question 5 okay it was not there in ncert so you didn't know okay yeah so third in things beyond ncert we are not studying but sometimes it's good to know something outside ncert so you have a extra advantage of the other student right yes so all of the above that's absolutely right so your bt toxin is effective against all of this meaning the insecticidal protein can kill all of this okay you have heard about bt toxin okay so you are well informed and updated sadang very good so question number 6 yes naveen good 
RNA interference technique has been devised to protect the plants from the nematodes is silenced by dash produced by the host plant. Double standard DNA, single standard R uh, DNA, double standard RNA, target proteins. So what is the answer here? Yes, so this is your double standard RNA. So what is this entire story? So Siddharth might not understand the head and tail. So you have tobacco plant, right? So India also runs its uh, economy by tobacco because a lot of smokers we have. So thanks to all the smokers because they are giving our economy to the country. So though we have such uh, terrible pictures on the cigarette uh, packets, people still continue to do so. Fine, whatever it is. So those tobacco plants are also getting affected by a lot of worm-like organisms. They are nematodes, okay? So just like you have bacteria, nematodes are a group of small organisms, which is again microscopic, okay? So these organisms, they infect the root parts of the tobacco, thus causing a reduction in yield. So how are we going to overcome this problem? So we have to find a solution. The solution comes in the form of RNA interference. What is RNA interference? Your body, my body has RNA interference. It is a type of defense mechanism. So all of us know from molecular basis of inheritance, your DNA replicates. The information on your DNA is copied onto the RNA and the RNA decodes it to proteins, right, or translate into proteins. Suppose if I have a double stranded RNA, so we also know only one strand of DNA is copied onto the RNA and not both the strands of DNA are not copied onto the RNA, right. So I hope till this much we are very clear because this is the base of your transcription or the central dogma. Now, so what is the main reason why both the strands of DNA are not transcribed? Because they might form a double standard RNA which will inhibit the process of translation. So if our cell decides this gene is not needed for us, it will produce, it will transcribe both the sets of the DNA and it will form a double standard RNA. So when you have a double standard RNA, your ribosomes, your tRNA cannot read it. So thus your process of translation is inhibited, okay? Yeah, so what happens here? So this is my plant and this is my nematode, okay? So I take the essential genes of nematodes. So nematode also has essential genes for its survival, right? So it also needs proteins. So I take out the essential genes and put it inside this plant. So as a result, it will undergo a replication transcription, right? So I put the gene such that both the strands of DNA are transcribed. So now I will get double stranded structure like this, right? So this is my double stranded RNA of my nematode gene. So I have proteins like DISA which chops off into small pieces. The resulting small pieces are your small interfering RNA that is your SI RNA, fine? Now, suppose if a nematode infects my roots, so now the nematode also has its genes, so for it to survive, it will undergo replication and transcription, so by transcription, it will produce one strand, yes, so we already have these siRNAs, right, so I have a particular complex known as risk complex. RNA induced silencing complex, they will cleave the RNA so that it becomes single stranded here. Right, so whichever part of your mRNA is produced inside your nematode, I have a complementary sequence to it. It will quickly go and bind, so thus a double standard RNA is formed, so it will not undergo translation, right. So because I have all the sequence inside the plant already, now it will go and form a double standard RNA, so that is the main reason for it, okay. So this is your RNA interference. So it is fun to do such questions. So please join my mentee Sadan. So please bring our friends as well. Yeah, question number seven. So tobacco plants resistant to a nematode have been developed by the introduction of DNA that produce both sense and antisense RNA, a particular hormone and antifeedant, a toxic protein, right? Last time a neck point revision, so we want to do like this. So yes, I have also decided for biology one shot revision. So I will do it on Monday so that it will be useful for you. Okay. Yes, I will do a one shot biology. So we will revise all the topics put together. So what are the things you should remember? What are the things you should go through? I will tell you. Okay. Yes. What is the answer here? So question number seven. Option A. So what does this mean? What is sense and antisense RNA? 
So this is my DNA. So only one strand of information is copied onto the mRNA. Otherwise, it will form a double strand, right? So this strand, this strand is known as antisense strand. This is known as sense strand. But here uh, inside the tobacco plant, I insert genes such that both the strands are copied, right? So in that we have both sense and antisense RNA which forms a double stranded RNA, okay? Yes, yeah, you want a one shot biology. So in a nutshell, so it might go on for one hour, 15 minutes, but please stay with me. I will tell you last minute, what are the points that you should pay attention to, okay? Yes. Okay, thank you for this blind faith in me. Okay, Ajit, hi, hello. So, um, Bhuvana, hi, hello. So, thank you so much for joining. So, please do like, share and subscribe. Okay. So, question 8C, peptide of human insulin is a part of mature insulin molecule responsible for the formation of disulfide bridges removed during the maturation of pro-insulin to insulin responsible for its biological activity. So, what is the right, right answer here? Yes. So, what is the right answer? So question number 8. Yes, Anthony, you are absolutely right. Removed during the maturation of pro-insulin to insulin. So, the first recombinant protein that was produced was your humulin. So, human insulin. So, that is why it is known as humulin, right? So, what was the organism in which the insulin was inserted inside? Your E. coli, right? Wow, Sudan, you are super smart. I didn't know your talents before. Huh? So generally our insulin is a peptide hormone. It is made up of a series of amino acids and you have two chains especially. You have an A chain and a B chain. The A peptide chain and the B peptide chain are joined together by your disulfide bonds. But always your hormone is produced in a pro-hormone form and then it is matured. So in the pro-hormone form, it has a C-stretch which is not needed in the final stage. So in the mature stage, the C-peptide is chopped off. But if I am going to artificially produce this, so how did I do? So there was one company in America that is known as Eli Lilly. It took the genes for chain A, chain B separately, it cultured them in a recombinant E. coli and then they artificially added disulfide bonds. So that is how you have recombinant insulin. So people with diabetes inject insulin, right? So this is how it is. So thanks to the country, thanks to the uh, pharmaceutical industry, thanks to the co company. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to have artificial insulin today. This is a recombinant insulin. We are taking the genes directly from humans, not from cows or pigs. So if you take from cows or pigs, you have cross reaction, you have allergic reactions happening, right? Yeah. So question 9, the first clinical gene therapy was given in 1990 to a 4 years old girl with the enzyme deficiency adenosine deaminase, tyrosine oxidase, monoamine oxidase, glutamate dehydrogenase. Yes, what is the answer here? Yes. Yeah, adenosine deaminase. So this is an enzyme which is very important for the production of your nucleotide. So we need nucleotide production for the process of transcription, replication, etc. Right? So in this condition, adenosine deaminase deficiency, the person lacks the enzyme to code for this gene. So as such, the process that is enhanced by this catalyst does not happen. So now how do we do this? How do we correct this? So that is where the process of gene therapy comes into picture okay that's completely fine so you answered some things beyond your level I'm really happy yeah so you take a ADA gene from a normal individual right so we clone it inside a plasmid and give it inside a bacteria so ideally we are cloning it right but when you have to give it inside higher animals like us we use a retrovirus we cannot use a bacterial vector in our body right so now once we are done cloning we take this gene of interest alone and put it inside a retrovirus which has been inactivated so now you inject the retrovirus inside the human lymphocytes okay so now this uh, gene has been inserted inside the lymphocytes okay so now i culture the newly inserted lymphocytes and now i put it inside the patient Okay, so this was the gene therapy. But these lymphocytes are not immortal. They have a definite lifespan. So this is not a permanent cure. So now how do I treat them? 
So lymphocytes come from a progenitor cells, right? So what if I correct that progenitor cell, then it is a permanent cure, okay? Chalo, this is your gene therapy. So question 10, so the site of production of ADA in the body is bone marrow, lymphocytes, blood plasma or monocytes? Because just now we read, right? So what are the cells we took? So where are your ADA enzymes produced? So what are the cells we cultured? That was your lymphocytes. So here it's a straightforward answer, lymphocytes. But here people will get confused between bone marrow and lymphocytes. Please don't do that. It is not bone marrow, it is lymphocyte. Bone marrow is different, lymphocytes are different. So site of ADA production is your lymphocyte. Okay, so that is why here we are taking the lymphocytes. We are not taking the bone marrow. Right? So the answer is option B. So Buwana and Roshna. So please change it. The answer is option B. Okay? So yes. So moving on to question number 11. The use of bioresources by multinational companies and other organizations without proper authorization from the countries and the people concerned without compensatory payment is called as uh, bioethics, biopiracy, bioterror, bioweapon. Okay, that's completely fine, Siddhant. Yes, what is this? Yes, what is this? What is the answer here? Yes. Not bone transplant. I said to change the progenitor cells. So, okay. So, how is it? Okay. So, I am explaining this question. So, your bone marrow produces a progenitor cell. Which in turn differentiates into your erythrocytes, into your leukocytes, and into your platelets. So, here this progenitor cell which differentiates into WBC, so this can be changed. If you directly change the factory itself, then everything is proper, right? Yes, so if there is a problem in the start itself, why don't you change that? That is what I am saying. Bone marrow transplant is not very easy because the survival chances of bone marrow are very less. Okay, you got it? Yes. So, wow, Sudant, very good. So, this is your biopiracy. So, in biopiracy, you have to remember the examples of your basmati rice. You have to remember your mango varieties. Sorry, not uh, mango varieties, neem and turmeric. So, all these were patented without our knowledge. And today, we have to pay money if we have to cultivate them. So, but we fought and got back our rights. But that is different, right? You should at least let the person know. So, there will be some tea, sh uh, tea stall. There, sh there should be some coffee shop where the taste is wonderful. Whatever you do, you cannot get that taste at home. Right? So, there will be sh some shop which has a very yummy masala dosa, but you can never get the taste at home. Sometimes you go crazy for some chutneys, right? So, I don't know how he makes it. How much ever I make, I am not getting that. So that is his specialty. He's not going to share the recipe with you, right? So, much in the same way. So, that is your bio piracy. Okay? Yeah. So, question 12. So, DNA or RNA segment tagged with a radioactive molecule is called as a vector, a probe, a clone, a plasmid. Yes? Yes, what is the answer here? So, a DNA or RNA segment tagged with a radioactive molecule is called as what? Your vector, your probe, your clone, your plasmid. Yes, perfectly right. So, the answer is here your probe. So, I hope everyone agrees. Right. So, now what is a probe? So, your biotechnology also finds application in medicine. So, in medicine, we spoke about gene therapy, how recombinant insulin is produced. We also have another advantage that is molecular diagnostic. Okay. So, this molecular diagnostic can be done in three ways. One is ELISA to detect your HIV virus. Right. The next one is your PCR like you have your RT-PCR now. That is your polymerase chain reactions. You amplify a particular region to find out if your virus has integrated its genome. Right. The third one is a probe. So what do they uh, do it in the probe? What do they do here? Ma'am, even if we ask the recipe and cook in the same way. Sai, Sai Bolab. Okay, that is very true. So, please don't ask a recipe from a tea master or a coffee master. So, if it's good, please go there and drink. Okay, yes, fine. So, I have a DNA sample. 
Suppose if I suspect I have a mutation in this DNA sample. I suspect this person has a mutation somewhere. That is why he is getting the symptom. So now I want to do a DNA testing. So I take out his DNA. I denature the DNA. I break the hydrogen bonds. Now I have two different strands. Right? But I know the sequences of this DNA. Say for example, this is chromosome 6 in your humans. I know the sequence of chromosome 6 from your human genome project. So I can prepare the complementary sequence myself in lab. Right? So when I prepare the complementary sequence, I prepare it in bits and pieces and I radio label it. Now if I take one strand and put it inside this mixture, so now it has complementary sequence, it will go and bind like this. Right? So since it is radioactive, I know where it is binding. There are some portions where it will not bind. So that is where the mutation is there because I did not make a probe that has a mutation. Right? So these are probes. So probes are small oligonucleotide sequence. Ma'am, what is oligonucleotide? What is nucleotide? So oligonucleotide is when it has less than 10 nucleotides. It is an oligonucleotide. Okay? So this is my oligonucleotide and this is my probe. Done? Okay. So question 13, the transgenic animals are those which have foreign DNA in some cells, foreign DNA in all of the cells, foreign RNA in all of the cells, both A and C. Yes? What is the answer here? Quick. So the transgenic animals are those which have foreign DNA in some cells, foreign DNA in all of the cells, foreign RNA in all of the cells or both A and C. So what is the right answer here? In some cells, in some cells, in both A and C they have RNA also. Huh? No guys, no, you still haven't got the concept right. They have foreign DNA in all the cells. Now tell me, I am a human being, right? I isolate a cell from my intestine. I isolate a cell from my kidney or my liver. So the cells of my intestine are my epithelial cells, okay? The cells of my kidney are nephrons. The cells of liver are hepatic cells. The structure is different, the function is different, but every cell has a genetic material. All the genetic material in all my cells, I have billions of cells. I have on an average 10 power 14 cells and all the cells have the same genetic material. The structure of the cells can differ, the name of the cells can differ, but the genetic material cannot differ. So if I insert a new gene in one cell, it will be copied, it will undergo division. So if I make a transgenic product, so in all its cells, in all its DNA, I have a new gene, right? No Darshini, it is not D, it is B. Foreign DNA in all of the cells. So here we never insert an RNA, we only insert a DNA. Right? So all the transgenic animals we have are mammals. So you are not dealing with a virus. The genetic material is not virus. If you say it is D, it is absolutely wrong, which means you haven't understood the logic. So it is foreign DNA in all the cells. So please don't make a mistake. Okay? Uh, yes, ma'am. A very, very happy good evening. So welcome to my lecture. So thank you so much for joining. So please do like, share and subscribe. So question 14. The protein alpha-1 antitrypsin, it is a recombinant protein. It is used to treat cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, Alzheimer's disease or emphysema. Yes, so please be very vigilant. So you should know how to read things properly. Okay? Yes. So alpha-1 antitrypsin. So this is a recombinant protein that we have today. So recombinant protein means you take the human gene encoding this protein into a host, right? So here it is emphysema. Emphysema is caused because of smoking. Yes, absolutely right. Good. So GEAC stands for Genomic Engineering Action Committee. So Ground Environment Action Committee, Genetic Engineering Approval Committee, Genetic and Environment Approval Committee. So what is the answer here? Yes, yes, Siddhant, you're right. But for this question, what is the answer? Question 15. So you should know transgenic animals have certain advantage, uh, have certain use. 
So what are the use of your transgenic animals? It is used to study the normal physiology. They act as disease models. They are used for chemical testing. They are used for recombinant production as well. Okay. And of course for vaccine testing as well. So genetic engineering approval committee. So just like that you cannot get animal studies for your project. You have to write a report. They will see if your project is valid. If it's going to have any purpose in the near future. Okay. Yes. So this is the last question. So we are done revising this chapter as well. Yes. So I hope it was a very interesting session. Yes. So tomorrow you will join me for a 15 minute coffee break. So make sure you have coffee with me at 5. But basically I won't be having coffee. But you guys can have coffee and I will tell you a story. Right. So that is your antibody cocktail. So please join with me tomorrow at 5. It is just a 15 minute session. And I'm not taking a lecture because day after tomorrow you have a full syllabus menti. So first will be botany. So you will have 40 quest 45 questions in botany. And day after tomorrow you will have 45 questions in zoology. Okay, so please join me tomorrow for a 15 minute coffee break. So you can take a 15 minute coffee break from your tedious preparation, right? And you can know what is antibody cocktail because it is with reference to your COVID-19 infection, right? Yes. Coffee with Krishna ma'am. Yes, yeah, you can say it's coffee with Krishna ma'am if you like to. So we are done with your wrap-up series. A big goodbye. So I have completed the 38 chapters of biology twice on YouTube. So you can refer to all my lectures. I have solved ample questions and number of questions easy to critical thinking level. So please look into them and solve. Hi, I open Shakti Well. Yes, welcome. So that is for it. So day after tomorrow we are having a mentee. Yes, I will have one shot biology on Monday. So Please join me. So in one lecture, I will give you a shortcut or a nutshell for the entire biology. What are the points you should re recollect? For example, when I open the chapter digestion, what are the points you should be able to recollect? Okay. So one chapter, one slide. So we will have 38 slides. Okay. Yes. So thank you so much for making the lecture very, very interesting. So you people give me the strength and the energy to come and stand here every evening at 5 p.m. So thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. So this is me wishing you more and more. So please stay tuned and take care and have a great night ahead. Bye-bye.